Hello everyone. I hope you guys had a wonderful day and are making some really good trades. Let's dive into the analysis here. We'll start off with the spot, the spy, and uh, we'll work our way down on the indices here. I got a new I little IWM chart that I cleaned up. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And at the same time, I'm still fighting off this cold here. Funny enough, it's like the summer, but I still caught a cold. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, the market continues to churn higher. Uh, 30, up 31 basis points today. So really, I don't expect much movement in the market uh, until Wednesday because Wednesday is going to be uh, the big CPI uh, announcement day. Uh, and then we also have uh, the Fed fund rate and the FOMC meeting, FOMC projections. So that's going to be an uh, action-packed day, obviously starting off with 8.30. Uh, CPI is, supposed, is expected to remain flat year over year. And is expected to drop month over month so it's going to be interesting to see how that data is going to come out i think the markets are kind of set up uh for a melt-up scenario to be honest because uh, we got a nice little drop today in the iwm uh, and then a big uh, reversal with a strong wick so again that kind of tells me that smart money is is kind of buying this this dip here uh we could take a look to see if they actually are uh on uh on the smaller time frames, four hours, so you got a nice little green cross there. Uh, one hour, not really any buying. You probably have to get down to the really the smaller time frames to see if they are buying this dip. Nope, not really seeing any buying. So that's quite interesting. Maybe we uh, we got maybe one more low to make in the IWM before we actually, <coughs> excuse me, get a definitive low in place. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see. We just gotta be patient with it. Sometimes it doesn't always show up on the IWM. You have to check the futures or some other indices. So there you go. I mean, you check the, the futures and you're starting to see some buying happening uh, right around the lows. You're also seeing some selling as well, sir. But uh, on the larger 30 minute, there you go. You got some dip buys coming in. Uh, one hour, two hour. There you go. You got smart money buying this dip down here uh, as it was dropping. And it's, it's dropping right now in the after hours as well. So it's going to be... Pretty choppy, pretty volatile until until further notice, until the, the FOMC meeting, in my opinion. So, yep, yeah, uh, let's continue on. So, uh, not really uh, anything new today. Uh, the We have an 8 and a 1 on the dual band strength index. The new candle is showing more bullishness, 12 and a minus 2. So, actually, a little bit more bullish than yesterday. Four hour time frame recovering from this uh, dip that we got. And it's uh, trying to cross back here in green money flow, but it's in the red at the moment. Uh, one hour time frame also recovering some red uh, but we want to see uh, some more upside and break the highs and again it's the second you the, the second you keep breaking these highs you get you get the shorts to squeeze and they close all their shorts their stops are hit which causes it to, to jump up a bit right every time you do that and uh, if we get a big bullish day on Wednesday then it's going to be the mother of all short squeezes all the shorts are going to close because you know if they're going to cut rates and it's going to cause a short-term rally uh, that's going to blow everyone out of the water that's you know with that have that has hedges and whoever has hedges are going to unwind them uh d during that if it's if it is a bullish event of course right i, I don't know uh i'm favoring the upside but i could be wrong um and then let's take a look here at a at a at the iwm so i want to cover the iwm here uh we got a nice little drop right in this wave too so i'll just uh, get on the smaller time frames and i'll show you guys that we could have just uh finished this uh this correction here <clears throat> in this abc correction so this could have already ended uh today after this drop either i think the low is here and this is an abc so let me just uh, draw this here and i'll give you guys a nice little target so 100%. I think it could have been it could have been a little bit a little bit lower. I think I'm drawing. I think I, I should have drawn a little bit higher. But overall, it kind of nailed the target area today. Let me pull it down to the B. There we go. So we actually had a really nice reaction from this level here, uh, in terms of the wave two. Uh, I've been. I had a really complex uh, uh, chart here for the IWM. I kind of simplified it, and it just made it a one, right? And now we're impulsing out. We should come out in this three, and if they are gonna cut rates and the Fed really pivots and caves in, which is 
technically going to be like the first sign that shit's about to hit the fan for the economy, but the market's going to rally because in the short term, they're going to love it. But in the long term, it's going to be a disaster. The reason why they're cutting rates is not because they won against inflation. It's because there's bigger underlying problems. But anyways, uh, this correction should have finished today. Uh, if we get another dip down, uh, then we would be looking for a bullish divergence, right? For a fifth wave extension. Uh, but at, at the same time, you look at the 15 minute, you get on the smaller time frames, you already have bullish divergence. So this correction could have already ended. Uh, you might start to just impulse out here slowly. But if this is a wave three, uh, you don't get in front of the IWM. You don't get in front of the small cap shorts right now because it could be a really, really big uh, bullish scenario. All right. Coming, coming for you. Uh, and again, this is, would be the, the, the main target basically between uh, three, uh, sorry, 233 to uh, 248. I think that's a, that's the main target that we're looking for. <clears throat> and this, this B could uh, end at any time, at any moment, right? And the second you enter this area, which we almost did here uh, back in March, it could have ended. Uh, but I think the B will extend into this area somewhere here. Uh, and that's when, the, that's when I'd be looking for shorts in this market. Okay, so that kind of outlines what I'm thinking here. Uh, let me can let me continue, and uh, I'll cover a few more things. I wanted to cover some individual names. So Nvidia uh, has gotten that stock split, so all our charts are kind of useless now. I didn't get to work on them just yet, but the counts are essentially the same. Uh, we are looking for a fifth of a fifth of a fifth. I just have to kind of drag everything down. And you just redraw all my lines, but everything is kind of useless now. Uh, but essentially, this should be finishing up right uh, pretty, pretty, pretty soon. If not, and in the race, at, let's say we have a big gap up day, and Nvidia goes to like 130, which is equivalent of 1,300 a share. Uh, then Nvidia would this would mean that Nvidia, right, is a, is a racing divergence, and it's just extending the fifth wave. And you just you can you can do that continuously be honest until you reach the major uh, the major uh areas right wow what is this candle here <laughs> what is this candle on uh, on nvidia i i don't know if this is accurate or if it's just a glitch in the system but it's showing a wick and a pump of 59 percent. so i don't know if that's correct i think that's just a technical error on the trading view uh tesla tesla had a down day today down two percent uh, not much to say, to be honest. I think uh, the vote is coming for Tesla. And I'm leaning on the bullish side, right? And I'm seeing, you know, we're still in red money flow. It's just chop, side, you know, sideways chop. It's starting to roll over from green money flow back into red. So if we do get this dip and it doesn't hold and Tesla does, does, this, does this double correction down, and then this would be just another dip to buy. You'd be lucky to, if it could get down, to these levels here so I can give you a target for this uh, bigger correction because this one's over here so I can delete this target uh, I can delete I could delete a lot of stuff here but uh, let me just get down to to the nitty-gritty and give you guys sorry that's not it give you guys a short-term target for this uh, for this Y wave <clears throat> so if we do come back down let's see here then the target would be right between 155 to 136 for Tesla. If this Y wave plays out, if the wave two is in, right, and this and we're not gonna get this correction, and the two is in, then you're gonna rock it out. You're you're literally gonna impulse out in in a massive wave up. You're gonna be gapping up. You're gonna be doing like 10% day, not 10% days, but 10% weeks, right? Where Tesla is just going up, and then finally, you know, people will capitulate, buy in at the at the wrong time, top of the wave three. And then you pull back away four, pad XL, and then another high fifth wave. The FOMO again, then the bigger correction comes and the first impulse is done. Okay, so that's that's basically it. Um, let me take a look at Roku. So Roku, again, I was actually talking to some members inside the Discord today. Um, and we've been looking at this secondary bearish scenario. So I got a lot of counts here, lots of, you know, Kind of all over the place but i can simplify it uh for you and uh, essentially let me just delete some stuff you know these, these are moves that i've been tracking and playing throughout the this whole time here 
but uh, let me let me just move some stuff and delete some accounts because there's some unnecessary smaller accounts that are kind of just in the way here. All right, so if this is extending this wave to lower, right? If this is going to go lower, then this whole move here was just your first impulse out, right? This was just your one, and now you're gonna extend the two. And if you're gonna extend the two, you can go as low as 38, right? So that's why, you know, it's a low risk, uh, high, high reward opportunity right now to buy to buy around these levels. Because if you take out, if you go, if you, I mean, it's already starting to break, but if you start to take out these pivots back down to 55, you just stop out and you you move on. You you because this thing will go back down to 38, and if it takes out the pivot at third at 38, then it's it's probably a good night to Roku, and this thing is gonna go. It's like a it's gonna go back down to uh, like 16 or whatever because there's gonna be some fundamental problems with Roku. But again, I'm still hoping that we can get out of here in another in another leg higher. Uh, but again, it's not looking too good right now. It's not looking that great. We could take a look at Roku <clears throat> on the daily. I mean, it's just endless red money flow here. Uh, red money flow on the four hour, one hour. Okay, one hour you got some green money flow, but the larger time frames, right? That's what you like to focus on. It, you had an opportunity to form a low, a couple lows here in a pump, but it just seemed to fail and investors are just losing confidence. So... I'm not sure what to make of it, but uh, hopefully it can it can get out of this rut. Anyways, let's move on. Let's take a look at BABA. So BABA is a trade that we are in. Uh, again, this would be a dip buy opportunity here in this wave two, in my opinion. I think you're set up for a continuation uh, higher, and uh, hopefully it does that. So that's what we're in right now. Uh, same thing for the HSI. So HSI uh, is a trade that we're in as well. Uh, and I, I, I think this would this this if this uh, is done here, then that would be great for the, the the Hang Seng index, and it just starts to rally out in this wave three to make one more high in the fifth wave, uh, and then this would mean that the, the the first impulse is done for China, and then we're gonna pull back in a wave two, which would mean like a month month long correction or a couple months of correction corrective move to pull us all the way back down here. And we're going to lose this whole fifth wave, all right? And we're going to come back down almost like to the 18,000 if we can get another high. Um, let's take a look at some other things here. So we just continue on, take a look at PayPal. Uh, PayPal still looking good. So finishing up this wave one, uh, it needs to just pull back into two and then continue up into three of three. So that's really bullish. Uh, okay, I think that's it for some individual names here. We can cover Apple, talk about Apple. So Apple, uh, it's got one more leg down here. I think, I think it's just, I think it finally just finished its first, first wave, right? Its first impulse up, but I could be wrong. And, you know, maybe the, the wave two is already in because it's just so super bullish and it wants to keep pushing higher. And if you get a big bullish day on Wednesday and it takes out the 200s, uh, then Apple's gonna go to like 240s, right? It's gonna it's gonna eventually end up there, and that's just you know that's this how bullish some some of these stocks can be. I don't know what would take it there, but that's just what I, you would see with these these counts. But I think we need a, di a deeper two, uh, but we'll see we'll see. You know if the market's just so bullish and it's just set up to go to new highs. And just keep going higher, and that's that's just what's gonna happen, right? Apple's just gonna keep going higher with the market. Uh, okay, so let's cover TLT. So TLT and the bonds had another down day today, right? The TLT got another drop in this wave too. Uh, so I think this is just another dip buying opportunity. Uh, let's take a look to see if Smart Money is buying the dip on this. Uh, get over here on maybe the, the one hour. One hour time frame, okay. So they were selling right here at 93. Take a look. Are they dip buying 30 minute? Yeah, they are buying the dip. They're buying the dip today. So I think this was just another dip to buy. Uh, and I think we got higher to go. Uh, but yeah, you can see they were selling here. And then this big drop happened in the 20 year spiked, right? Big spike in the 20 year. So I think this is just you're finishing up this wave too, essentially. Uh, and then you're just going to come back down. Uh, sorry, the yields are going to come back down. 
and I think the yields have a big impulse coming up soon. So that should be good if you're holding TLT. Uh, let's talk about GME. You know, why not? Let's talk about GME, GameStop. Um, so GameStop is uh, finishing uh, this correction, I think. Uh, and then I don't know what for what reason it's going to go up, but uh, this should this should be it. You know, it got pretty darn close to the buy area, but it should it should start at any moment. And uh, if you do get dip, a dip back in, then it's like a gift and you should just consider this a big buying opportunity to go higher. And again, this has nothing to do with fundamentals. This is all technicals. Uh, and we've corrected this entire move down, right, for three years. So this is only natural that you're going to start doing some crazy things again. So this is what I see in terms of accounts. So again, this is very risky, very, very risky, but do do what you think, <laughs> do what you think is best. All right, um, let me continue on. Let's cover some more names. Uh, let me scroll up here. So let's take a look at Mara. So Mara is kind of in a lackluster state, right? All these crypto miners are kind of dead money, pretty boring. Had some nice updates here and there, but again, Bitcoin got a pretty decent drop not too long ago and might be getting set up for another drop back down. Uh, so we'll have to monitor Bitcoin, but... Uh, if it does getting it, it does get another drop, uh, maybe you know the miners get another like lower here. And again, I could be wrong about this first uh, Y wave uh, X wave being in, right? Maybe this is your this could be your first A, and then a B, and then a, a larger C impulse out for the X wave to extend higher. If that's going to be the case, right? If if Bitcoin is going to go to new highs, which I still think it can, right? If we're going to get some bullish bullish days uh, after the SFOMC meeting, then for sure, for sure, this is going to be a dip to buy in, in the miners and you're going to get a rally higher. But ultimately, I, I see a bigger correction coming uh, and then eventually a big accumulation phase before the ultimate run in the, the cryptos. OK, uh, let's cover the gold and silver. So I we know we got a big drop recently in gold and silver. I saw a lot of people were worried about that. So if this is uh, really a bigger correction, then again, there's not it's not to worry. I mean, like, look how far you've come, right? And it's like you've go, went from twenty two dollars to thirty two dollars. That is a massive move in a commodity. That's a massive move for silver, right? Forty five percent. So it's only natural that you're going to start to to do a correction. If this sea leg wants to extend lower, which looks like it kind of wants to, then you don't need to be too worried. I think the I think you got a you got a good opportunity coming for a, a dip buy and you could already be doing that already. So let me just uh, get on some smaller time frames here. One two. I mean, yeah, you could you could you could already be done. Uh, but let's let's take a look. Let's see here. What we got? Where's where's my where's my fibs? There we go. Yeah, so you're kind of in the buy area already, but if it wants to do a double correction or something and it wants to get fancy with it, then it's going to go a little bit lower. But ultimately, the trend is higher. So I'm not selling. You know, I've been holding for a very long time and I'm going to continue to hold these positions. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, it should be it could be finished, should be finished, but uh, it can it could go lower. Right. It's 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 good. It's going to be vol. It's going to be a volatile time. Uh, we're going to get into some high volatility uh, uh, sessions here in the, in the coming days. Um, let's take a look at uh, gold. So gold is back into the buy area here. Still holding the lows, the pivot low. So you could technically call this a wave two. And it's just getting ready to impulse out in a wave three, which is actually extremely bullish for gold. Uh, oil. Oil should be finishing up this correction. Either this is the first wave, right? And... Uh, let me see here. Actually, this if that's the case, then this is a wave three. Uh, but I actually see this as the the first impulse down, a corrective move, and then another another, another low here. I, I think I moved some stuff. There we go. I get back on the four hour. Uh, but uh, looks like it could have invalidated wave one. I don't know where I had this drawn. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So either you put your one here or your one there. But this this to me looks like. It could just be 
your first impulse is done and now you're going back in a wave two a little bit impulsive for a wave two but kind of kind of like a crash correction but again the bears need to need to push this lower pretty darn soon so this i would i mean in terms of uh, an entry area it'd probably be pretty darn soon here or probably at 79 and then you ride it back down and then this thing should head back down to to the 70 area uh, natural gas natural gas is on fire continues to, to rally up so natural gas is actually looking quite bullish here but you still got big bearish divergence so you're essentially inside this fifth wave and this move did not did not occur so it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to play out i don't really have a count for it anymore um okay so yeah that's that's basically it the dollar uh nice nice uh, wick down today after a big move up I uh, see a lot of people panicking, so a lot of people are panicking and getting out of the market before the FOMC. And they're selling silver, they're selling gold, they're selling everything, right? Because they think they got they got the rates are going up, but they're they're done, they're toast, they're finished. Uh, they're 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 out of time. We've said this for for a long time. They're politically out of time. Um, they're 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 stupid. They don't know what they're doing. You know, they're clueless. They're gonna do the wrong thing, and that the wrong thing is to cut rates and lower them. And tell the market that they're going to cut rates any at any moment, and the market is going to love it, right? But that's actually the wrong thing to do. But again, the Fed is known for doing the wrong thing at the wrong moment. So we're going to let them do what they do best, and you know, f up the economy even more, uh, and we're just going to profit for it in the market. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.